in the shower. Oh, I do them all in the shower. I don't have to choose one in the shower, do I? I can do as many as I like. Well, my favorite song is I'm Still Standing, but in terms of singing in the shower, I think I sing Tiny Dancer a lot in the shower. Benny and the Jets. Or Tiny Dancer, maybe. Or Tiny Dancer I sing when I'm driving a lot. Uh, it's a song called Amarina. It's from very early on. There's another one called uh, Boulder Song that's rather catchy, I rather like. I spent a lot of time with Elton. He's not someone who doles out tips, you know, but um, he is someone who's very interested in you and very generous and kind and warm and someone who is very approachable. Uh, that's my experience of him. And, um, and I learned so much about his, not only about his history, but about his attitude to his history. And that's what was really helpful. I'm lucky enough to, to call Elton a friend now. He's the most generous, loving, kind man you can meet. He's always in a snazzy Gucci tracksuit. <laughs> the incredible duality in him. He can be, one in one moment, the most fearsome, intimidating, gregarious person you've ever met. And the next minute, he can seem vulnerable and sensitive and sweet in the extreme. And, uh, and he oscillates between the two, which makes him great fun to be around. Getting to be a part of telling Elton John's story, uh, using his music, I mean, this was an, an incredible opportunity. You know, it, it's, he has such a remarkable legacy that he's leaving behind, and yet he's still well and good and performing and all of that, and so, um, so yeah, so for me, I just, I just felt like that just, you know, that this had so many extraordinary elements um, within this project. It's a story of highs and lows, and it means that he has to allow us to be brave and show some things that maybe always would not be considered flattering, but without the low, you can't have the high, and the film is really about celebrating him, his music, and his life, and, uh, and he just was very generous with that. It's 2019, you know, we are hopefully living in a progressive, sane society. Um, I know attitudes differ from territory to territory, but we're celebrating one of the greatest gay icons of all time, whose career is full of firsts. And so if we are indeed the first studio movie to depict a same-sex male love scene, then I am fiercely proud of that. Uh, I mean, these things are never easy, because you're kind of naked in a room with, you know, 30, 50 people. It's always a bit strange. Um, but it's a really important moment um, in the film. It's a really important moment in Elton's life, and it's a pivotal part of the film. It's the first time he, he ever makes love with someone. So uh, it's it's a tough thing to shoot on the day, but I think Dexter handled it really well and kind of made a really beautiful scene. It's, it's difficult um, at the best of times, but people are professionals. They do their job, and they make it look convincing. And that's that's the that's the minimum requirement of the actor. But uh, it's great, I'm very proud of the scene. I think uh, Taryn and Richard are, are rightly proud of it and I know that Elton and David, his husband, are as well. I think it's just important in this story. I mean, you know, what other people decide or studios decide or whatever they think to be necessary or not is entirely up to them. I just think that in Elton's story, it's a seminal moment in his life when he kind of realizes who he is and that that's part of you know his journey and so and he falls in love with this guy and it's Richard Madden who's incredibly good looking who wouldn't fall in love with him uh, so it's just important in our story and then if, it, if it's relevant in other stories I'm sure that'll be the case all right me and Richard get on very well so so we you know it was totally fine and and neither of us have any problem with male intimacy uh, why would we um, you know and and we, 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 you know, it's, it was a scene that we were both passionate about because it's a, it's a very tender, beautiful moment in Elton's history. You don't play Elton John and be precious. You, you can't. You know, it's, you've got to, you got to, you got to throw yourself into it. So, yeah, if you don't want to see me in hot pants and very little else, so maybe don't come. No, do come. Do come. Well, every day was quite a joy of just seeing what Taron was going to come out of his trailer wearing and usually having to kind of shuffle sideways to get out because he'd have huge shoulder pads or feather boas or that big funky chicken outfit. I was in these beautiful fitted double-breasted suits with the big Cuban heel and you feel, you feel kind of cool in them. My first scene with Taron, he, um, he, he's, he's playing Elton John obviously and he's moved back home um, with his mother and uh, he comes into the kitchen and he's just wearing his underwear. And I remember that day, um, you know, just Taryn just 
walking onto set in his underwear and I was just like, oh, oh, good morning. I had no idea. Um, so so that, was, that was sort of an introduction to Elton John. Yes, I did, I, uh, I, <laughs> there is a bit of an extrovert in me and there is, uh, I am someone who quite likes to, I either like to wear a lot or not very much at all. Uh, and this film certainly afforded me the opportunities to do both those things. And yeah, we well, we thought, you know, we depict the writing of your song in this film and it's a, a scene we're really proud of, but we wanted to, you know, at the moment it happened, they were, they didn't know they were about to achieve genius. So we wanted to do things to try and subvert it a little bit. And it is very true that there were egg on the lyrics. And I didn't know that was very true until I went for dinner with Bernie Taupin last night. But uh, we also thought it might be quite fun to have me and wife fronts. Um, and so we did it. Yeah, no, I mean, it wasn't our first time meeting, but it was our first scene together. Um, there's a freedom that um, I think Taryn really took on in order to play Elton John. And, um, and you don't get embarrassed when you're in that space, which is, which is beautiful, it's awesome. We endeavor to put as many crazy moments in there as we possibly could. Unfortunately, we only have two hours, so all the crazy moments that he has had would probably fill up the film four or five times. So we had to be slightly selective, but no, there was nothing that was out of bounds, nothing off limits. I think all the fun was happening on camera. You know, it was, it was one of those really buoyant, fun, um, sets where there's lots of dancing and singing and laughing and, and all of that. So um, so there was a lot of mischief in front of the camera. What attracted me to the script, the project, was I met Dexter for lunch and he uh, he played me Taron singing Rocket Man. And I just heard it, um, I heard it differently, I heard it brand new and just thought this is going to be a special film that I'd like to be part of. I knew Elton's music. I was, I, like I could be like, oh yeah, that's, I love that Elton John song or whatever. But, um, uh, and I knew, I, I knew about his personality, I knew about his activism, but I didn't know his story. For instance, I didn't know that he was a child prodigy and went to the Royal Academy of Music. Like that, that was very surprising to find out actually. Taron brings this real truth and honesty to his acting, you know, that's what's so important that immediately makes you believe as much as he does that he's the person, which is so important. But also he has this incredible singing voice that I think the world is now going to discover that, you know, uh, he loves to use and he's really sort of happy to sing. And I think the opportunity that this part afforded him, he was like, yeah, 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 let me sing, let me sing. And I keep sending him back into the studio to record more and more songs, which he does just so brilliantly. Dodger Stadium's pretty big. Uh, when he played Dodger Stadium, there was a lot of people there. Uh, Saturday Night's All Right for a Fight is quite a moment where, where he transforms from being young Reggie into young, young man Reggie. There's, you know, the, the whole, the whole uh, film is really an endeavour to be as, as big and as bold and as exciting as, as Elton really is. It was hard to research this one because as his, his manager, he's always in the shadows, in the background. So there's not a lot of YouTube videos I could watch that you see a lot of John Reed. I had to speak to a lot of people and uh, and pull stories from them on what he was like and, and then kind of piece together a character from there. Um, well, for me, I, I had a dialect coach, which was great. Uh, and just something that we talked about was that she's trying to, you know, she wants to seem a little bit more uh, upper class than she is. And yes, from she's from Pinner and, and all of that, but she's trying, you know to kind of level up. I would certainly be up for reuniting with you, Jackman, and I ideally hope that happens um, uh, in a film. Um, it, it may be happening in another way before, before then. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I've always been interested in Frank Sinatra, so that's something I'd like, just a story of, of his life. I would have Richard Madden playing Frank Sinatra. There you go, and Taryn could play Dean Martin. It would be amazing. <laughs> do it. Let's do it, Dexter. Let's do it tomorrow. I'm always very curious about Bjork. Curious about Ani DeFranco. But I think I, I like the idea of of stories being told with the artists themselves being involved in the telling of that story. Um, uh, because for me, that you know, that's authentic. What we did is we took the original footage, and slightly recut it and then we magically by the wonders of cinema put Taron in in where Elton was and 
uh, Taron reenacts it, and but it's it's him in the original footage of the original video. It's the wonders of cinema. It's the magic of special effects. I think for that bit, it felt especially important because uh, they literally dropped me into that footage from 84 or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, you spend a long time absorbing and uh, imbibing everything that is your subject, the subject you're portraying. But it's also an interpretation and it's a very uh, it's a theatrical telling of a story and it's a very stylized telling of a story. Um, so there's a bit of me in there as well.